You see them. Thousands of players who survived day one are back at the Rio. And day two of the main event is about to get underway. Johnny Chan, the master. Paul going to be all over, baby. And Chan has him. For some, the main event helped create a legacy. For others, it was a breakthrough moment. Yeah! This is beyond fairy tale. It's inconceivable. Maker and Kata all conquered the main event and now look to do it again. This is all mine. Tonight, they are joined by some of the best players in the world who have yet to make their mark on poker's biggest stage. Yeah. Players like cash game great Patrick Antonius, 2010 Poker Players Champion Michael Mizraki, yeah. and four-time bracelet winner Daniel Negreanu. Yeah, baby. They want what the former champions have. People remember Chris Moneymaker. They remember him because he won the biggest tournament in the world. I'm in the zone. I'm going after it. They are looking for their main event moment. I'm trying to make money here. They are looking to add to their legacy. The journey continues. Day two starts now. to the 2010 World Series of Poker presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Let's go. I'm Lon McCarran along with Norman Chad and the first of two day two main event sessions is about to get underway. Day two, baby. And the field is filled with some of the game's top pros. You always got all the chips, huh, Eli? Along with those who have left an impression on past main events. Everybody here can double me up. Nine former champions eye a return to the final table. Good luck today. Including Joe Catta, who hopes to go back to back Time for day two. while the last man to do so johnny chan comes in as one of the chip leaders y'all sleep good last night and norman try to contain yourself because at table two is none other than patrick antonius i'm wearing some old spice today at our feature table is daniel negranu Lon, this is Daniel's first day two since 2007. He starts under chip average with a little more than 24,000. Which one of you guys is famous? I'm pretty sure it's not me. Everyone knows Daniel. Which one is James Carroll? Are you, are you, that's you? Yeah. I heard you're good. I'm supposed to stay away from you. James Carroll is a familiar face. He took many of Phil Helmuth's chips on there day one. He's got a pretty good stack, almost 107,000. This time he's sitting to the left of Daniel Negreanu. Action will begin on amateur Adam Fisher, a hedge fund manager from L.A. on the Jack Link's Beef Jerky Pocket Cam, Ace Jack Offsuit. He has a law and business degree from Columbia University. That's really overkill. He limps in from under the gun to James Carroll. At this World Series, he's cashed twice, made one final table, and frustrated one poker brat. Days 1A and 1C combined to create this first day two session. Fold that over to Negranu. Ace Queen off. Can I see the flop, please? That's a very polite way to check from the big blind. So neither player raising with the big A's. The flop 4-9 queen. Daniel hits top pair. My mother was right. It pays to be polite. Daniel further disguising his hand by checking. Daniel looks like he's in early Six trap mode. With ace jack, Fisher bets 600. Fisher in early bluffing mode. Daniel. I've changed my mind four times. Makes a show of the call. He's oh. acting as if he was unsure whether to call. Third card. Ace is up now for Daniel, and that's bad news for Fisher. That card might change Daniel's mind a fifth time. Daniel with the check mark. He checks. Still in a slow plan, trapping mood. And that turn card could spell disaster for Fisher. Fisher is hooked now. He bets 1,200. I don't think the hedge fund manager will be getting those funds back. The Grano. I get 4,200. There's the check raise to 4,200. And that check raise announces Daniel to Adam Fisher. Remember, Fisher limped in under the gun with his big ace, and Daniel did the same from the big blind. So Fisher certainly might think his pair of aces are good. Fisher fights back, comes over the top to 13-2. And I don't think Daniel expected that. I'm not sure he's as comfortable now. I guess I'm all in. Daniel moves all in. He seems comfortable. Fisher has him covered. Well, he didn't go, call. That's always good. <laughs> Daniel seems very comfortable. 
Now, if you're Adam Fisher, would Daniel check Ray's all in without a monster? Okay. And 75 more. Yeah, Daniel needs every chip he can get from the hedge fund manager. Fisher does call drawing dead. And he'll hand almost three quarters of his stack to Daniel Negreanu in the opening minutes of day two as the hands are revealed. All right. You're a great Hollywood. Hollywood of the highest order. And Daniel acting like a player with a chance in his main event. He's doubled up early on day two, just what he needed. Good Hollywood. Thanks. I wasn't really. I mean, I thought you might have a good hand, like pocket nines or something. Daniel Negreanu picks up a monster hand early, doubling his chips, hoping that this is the start of something special on day two of the big one. Norman making it through day one is indeed an accomplishment, but it's just the first step of the main event journey. Now, if you make it through day two, you can begin to actually dream that nearly impossible dream of making a deep run all the way to the final table. Lon, in the last five years, some big names, Mattiso, Cunningham, Ivy, have made that deep run. But in that same stretch, one of their most iconic contemporaries, Daniel Negreanu, has just one small main event cash. He's off to a good start here, but the question is, can Kid Poker finally match his buddies and make his mark on the big one? Daniel will need to keep the momentum to make his mark. I'm Daniel. Daniel anyway. finally introducing Daniel. himself to Tristan McDonald. McDowell, right? Or Close. Close enough. Make something, right? McDonald, yeah. You've cashed in this event twice already. That's pretty close. That's pretty good, isn't it? He's cashed twice in the main event. 350 this, this score in 2004, too. Wow, look at this guy. Homework. And they say and they say poker doesn't take preparation. Both Daniel and James Carroll have researched their table mates. Well, the internet doesn't always help. When you search poker websites for James Carroll, up pops another poker player named James Carroll, masking this James Carroll's identity. Out into the field, and we find the player who went from being anonymous to being the face of poker world champion Joe Cata. Joe threw out a bet. Manny Best and Darwin Moon is watching. I don't want to get in there when he's in a hand. Very polite of Darwin. Doesn't want to disturb Joe until he's able to scoop in the chips. Darwin will be playing on the second day two session. Yeah. 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 How you doing? I saw you had some chips at the end of the uh, Got lucky. Joe Cata knows lucky. Another Darwin Moon special. Yeah, what do you got? 50 or something? Uh, no, I got 78. 70? Wow. I hit a three hour on the guys. That happens. Yeah. Sometimes it happens at the final yeah. table a couple of times for eight and a half million bucks. Cata over 60,000 hoping the Amazon room treats him as well as it did last year. And we welcome you to the pavilion which can hold twice as many tables as the Amazon room. There's Billy Cop, last year's 12th place finisher who sent his millions of chips to Darwin Moon when he was eliminated. Cop in a hand right now. His opponent bets 2,500 on the flop and Cop folds. The Darwin Moon Billy Cop flush over flush hand one of the most memorable of 2009. Yeah, Cop was one of the chip leaders last year but failed to make the final table. There's Dennis Phillips who was the chip leader going to the final table two years ago. Dennis with Ace King is all in. He was called by the pocket jacks of Justin Rolo. Here's the flop now. King Trey Deuce. So far so good. King on the flop. Phillips updating the rail. Rolo doesn't want to hear it. Turn card is a 10. Dennis still good. The turn card no relief to Rolo. He'll need a jack to bust Phillips. The river card is a 6 and Dennis Phillips will double up. But he's still very low on inventory with about 21,000. That's just pure poker and let the cards play what happens. <laughs> Dennis looking for a third straight deep run in the main event. All right, Norman, we're going to table two and Patrick Antonius. I wish I were wearing the good blazer today, Lon. You do have some competition. The ladies out in force here to watch Patrick and a hand against Michael Farrell. Patrick called from the button with nine five of hearts after Farrell had raised with ace king off. Patrick playing rags. The flop is seven ten ten. That misses both. Farrell's ace king is still best. And he's going to bet at 2,000. Patrick Antonius, 29 years old. Let's see what he looks like when he turns 30. Patrick will hitch on for the ride to the turn. He makes the call. Well, Patrick started with nothing. He still has nothing, so I guess he's calling to bluff the turn. And another 10 changes nothing. Farrell now checks this time. Patrick and I go to the same health club. He just works out a few more days a week than I do. Patrick sees an opportunity reaching for chips, 4,500. He thinks he can pick up the pot. Farrell, ace king is best, but into the muck they go. Power poker 101 for Patrick Antonius. Patrick takes the main event rookie down a notch. Chip quads. No, but he's got some nice quadriceps. <laughs> Holding kings. Hold <Both> kings. <laughs> yeah. Patrick Antonius muscling up, trying to finally go deep in the main event. The 2010 World Series of Poker is presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerk.
jerky. Feed your wild side. And in part by WSOPAcademy.com. Learn online from the champs in an interactive poker school. And PokerStars.net, the world's largest poker site. The World Series of Poker, presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Main event. Back at 3-0, over 5,000 players made it through the day once. 2,412 return to play today, while just over 2,700 will play on day 2B. One of the top stacks in the room belongs to the grinder, Michael Mizraki, who won his first bracelet this year. He's in a hand with amateur Jeff Stevenson. Grinder's made three World Series final tables this year and still has the slimmest of chances to become player of the year. Grinder at 2,500. Stevenson called a nine of clubs. A third club falls on the river. Mizraki checks. Stevenson checks back and shows ace king for top pair top kicker. Grinder shows just an ace. That spot. Don't show your hand until he flips it up. Okay. So one of the other players wanted to know what Grinder was playing in that situation. Grinder down for the day, but his big brother Robert is doing well. He's in a hand right now with Canadian Paul Biggs. He's all in. Biggs all in after the flop. Right, cool. Biggs the one at risk, and he sees his pair of aces behind the aces up of Robert Mizraki. Turn card is a jack. Robert's still good. Biggs will need a king, jack, or six. River is a queen. Robert Mizraki with the knockout. Robert's also made three final tables this year. It's tough to take down Mizraki's back-to-back. -back. Speaking of back-to-back, -back, two-time champ Johnny Chan is in a hand with Jimmy Johnson. Is this Jimmy Johnson the football coach? No, but Johnson's all in as Ace King trailing the pocket nines. Johnson picks up a Broadway draw. Is this Jimmy Johnson the NASCAR driver? No, it's not. The river card is an ace, and Johnson will win to survive, doubling through Johnny Chan. Chan was one of the top stacks, takes a little hit there. Oh, oh, this is Jimmy Johnson, the Swedish poker pro who won the Unibet Open in Warsaw last year. Yes, that's the one. Chan has lost about 45,000 chips today. Back to Daniel Negreanu, who started well, but he's no Johnny Chan in the main event. Daniel has not made it out of day two since 06. Where's your worst ever bad beat? First one that's free to mind. The 2001 main event. I was chip leader. The 12th to play. I came 12th. <laughs> well, actually, Daniel came in 11th that year, and ever since then, the main event has been nothing but a house of horrors for Kid Poker. The main event is something I always wanted to win when I first started playing poker, and always thought I would, but in the last few years, I felt like maybe I couldn't. Daniel Negreanu has been knocked out of this main event. One reason is because I don't really care to last. I'm trying to win. I'm usually going to go full head of steam and try to win the thing from hand number one. Daniel Negreanu has been knocked out. It's rare that that's going to work out. Oh, brother. That sucks. Also the fact that, you know, the whole World Series, it's a grind. By the time the main event rolls around, sometimes I'm a little bit out of gas. Another early exit. After I got knocked out last year, I decided no matter what, I'm going to give it my all next year's World Series. Oh, I love this game. I've made some adjustments. I have a really good understanding for how the online players are playing, how the old guys play, and how that relates to me. Uh-oh! They know that my goal is to play small pots and play a big one with the nuts. Now when I put it all in, it's not like, oh, well, he's got the nuts. I could be bluffing, too. <laughs> this is getting really sick. This year, I feel more prepared in that sense, so I expect really big things this year. Daniel always watches all six Rocky movies just before the main event. Maybe he should switch to Rambo. <laughs> there is the main event bracelet everyone is chasing. Daniel is having a good day, too, so far. Action on James Carroll. When he played with Phil Helmuth, Phil called him the worst player at the table. He took it as a compliment. James lays down 9-4. Over to amateur Marvin Glusak, former high school principal, Jack Knight of Clubs. He owns nurseries here in Las Vegas and sells large palm trees. He limps in for 500 from under the gun plus one. Doesn't it take, like, forever for a palm tree to get really large? I think you're right about that. To Daniel in the small blind, Jack, six off. Daniel, by the way, acquired a bit part in HBO's Entourage at a charity auction. Daniel calls for 250 more. Big blind Adam Fisher, Queen Deuce, checks his option. They've never had us on Entourage, have they, Lon? No, they have not. We can act! The flop, 10 deuce, 7. Fisher with a pair of deuces. Glusak with a gut shot straight draw. Negranu missed. And he checks. Do you have to water a palm tree, or does it grow naturally? It doesn't use a lot of water, I don't think. Adam and Marvin in this pot. Fisher checks his pair of deuces. Glue sack now. And he checks as well. They'll see a free turn card. Six of hearts. Negranu takes the lead, pairing his six. 
And now Daniel wants to bet 900. Daniel decides he might have the best hand, and he does. Fisher gets out of the way. Glusak calls. Glusak with the Patrick Antonius move, calling with nothing to bluff the river. And the river card is another 10. Daniel has two pair and the check mark. Daniel checks. Here he comes. You're right. Marvin's bluffing at it with 1,300. What are you doing, Marvin? Check the flop and you just call turn. Now you like the 10 all of a sudden? Doesn't make, doesn't make a lot of sense, Marvin. Daniel says he's got old guys figured out. Marvin is the oldest guy at this table at 69. <clears throat> tricky, tricky Marvin. Tricky, tricky Marvin. Trying to bluff chatty, chatty Daniel. Daniel is befuddled. Okay, Marvin. You got it. And he falls. The old timer got frisky with squad douche and took Kit Poker out to the woodshed. Nice sales job by Marvin. Tricky Marvin. Perhaps Daniel overthought that and gave the amateur too much credit there. It's a small step backwards for Negranu. And he taps out. We will rock you with his chips and hoping to do just that to this table. at the Rio, we head over to table two. Woo and the women are still swarming Patrick Antonius. Ooh. He has been unstoppable today. Hey, hey, hey. And in a hand now with Chuck Karuzovich, who bet with an open-ended straight draw. He's heads up with Antonius, who called with a gut shot. Turn card gives Antonius top pair. Karuzovich a flush draw. Patrick checks it. Patrick, a couple of final tables and 12 World Series caches, but no bracelet yet. Karuzovich bets 3,100. Betting on the draw. Patrick, check calls. Here's the river card. It's another six. Patrick with kings up, has the check mark, and he checks again. Check. Karusevich missed his draws. Same bet. He says same, same bet, bet. 3,100. Patrick calls right away. Yes. You and now he owns a few more chips. I could watch him stack chips all day. He's been doing quite a bit of that. He has almost doubled up here on day two. Patrick, of course, loves to play the high stakes out in the field. Another gambling man, Ted Forrest, who is one of the best prop bettors in the world. He, of course, has a big weight loss bet with Mike Mattiso. Wow, what happened to all his chips? I gotta imagine he's very hungry, Norman. <laughs> right now I'm uh, 150, 139.9 legs. Boy, he's got to lose 10 more pounds. Chances I win the bet, 99.9. Chances Mike the Mouth doesn't pay up, 99.9. Prop bettors are everywhere. We saw Durr having to wear a Peter Jetton button on day one. Aaron O'Rourke, a friend of theirs, now has one. Meanwhile, the real Peter Jetton is all in. His ace is leading the kings of Jeff Ulrich. Jack on the turn. That's a good card. Jetton likes that. Only a king would knock out Peter Jetton. River card is an ace, and that seals the deal. Peter Jetton with a double up. You know, at first I thought that was a picture of me hugging Peter Jetton on that button, but then I realized there were no cameras around for that. To Eric Seidel, who you remember is a pretty good game player. He won the boots off an opponent playing backgammon. He's got Troy Murphy at risk and dominated. Murphy hoping his king nine can come from behind. Murphy picks up an up and down straight draw. Frankly, I think Seidel cares more about the roasted butternut squash than the flop. A four of diamonds changes nothing. Boy, if Murphy hits the river, I hope Seidel doesn't do a spit take. Nope, another ace on the river and Seidel wins it to knock out Troy Murphy. Now he's talking with his mouth full. Who raised this guy? Seidel with a few more chips to work with. How do you call it all in the food in your mouth? That's rude. Hey, Eric, I think there's some cauliflower on your cheek. Seidel, of course, discovered poker through his backgammon playing buddies. Then there is Jeff Sauer, a child chess prodigy who just recently found poker. When Jeff was eight years old, he won the under-10 World Youth Chess Championship. Jeff wins a pop there. And at age eight, he was a chess commentator for PBS. People thought he was going to be better than Bobby Fischer, but shortly after that, Jeff stopped playing chess competitively. With almost 40,000 chips, a pretty good main event debut for Jeff Sauer. All right, let's get back to the feature table. Wait a minute, why, why can't we go back to Patrick at table two? We'll get there, don't worry. Here's Daniel, who's watching on as Marvin Glusak picks up another pot. Go Marvin. I got one rooter up there. Who's your rooter? You? Why are you rooting for Marvin? I don't think, I think he's adorable. Well, I think he's Wilford Brimley's younger brother. <laughs> <laughs> All right, action folds around to Daniel Negrano in late position. Queen Jack offsuit. 
Daniel arguably is the most public poker pro. He blogs constantly. I know more about his private life than I do mine. From the hijack seat, Daniel raises to 1175. Glusak in the small blind folds. When you sell a palm tree, aren't they tough to transport? <laughs> Tony Utnich in the big blind with pocket sevens. And he'll call for 675 more. You did a 25 year old of Bloomington, Indiana poker pro. Flop, tray, deuce, 10 all clubs. Utnitz adds a flush draw to his pocket sevens. Daniel missed. Utnitz checked. Daniel bets 1600. Daniel's going to try to steal it. Maybe Utnitz will check raise here, huh? Nope. Oh. Just a call. Just a thought. Turn card now. Is a nine. Utnich pocket sevens hold up. Daniel still trails, but now with an up and down straight draw and a couple of over cards. Utnich is another product of the moneymaker effect. He's got a couple of World Series caches. He's being cautious with the pocket sevens. He checks. I check. Daniel shuts down Operation Swagglefoos. <laughs> River card is a king, and Daniel Rivers is king high straight. Utnich. Wisely checks this time. Well, yeah, it's been a long time since Daniel's seen sunshine at the main event. This looks like sunshine. How much will Daniel bet? 4,500. Mutinich can't beat much. But he calls. Straight. And Mutinich will hand Mutnich over his calls. chips. Daniel's only cashed once in the last eight main events. Things are looking good in 2010. Thank you. You're the best, Daniel. Yeah, nice when you catch. Daniel is catching and chipping up here at the main event. Welcome back to the Rio and day two of the main event at our featured table. Daniel's day has gone well and he is in a chatty mood tonight. Jacksonville, Florida. Originally from Illinois. You like long walks on the beach? Daniel talking to Kristen <laughs> Budrick. And chihuahuas. I have a chihuahua. Yeah, I've have... seen my mushu. I once asked a woman if she wanted to see my mushu. I got slapped with a restraining order. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> yeah, this boy's cute. You should find a good picture. I always carry around a picture of my dog, Sapphire. Boy, she loves me. He's cute. Dogs aren't too picky. Good for you. <laughs> Daniel continuing to talk with his table mates. He says any information you have about your opponents is good information, and it's working well for Daniel. Action is on Tony Utnich, who dropped out of the Indiana University School of Business and turned to poker full-time. Jack, 10 of clubs. He raises the 1,200. Daniel sometimes reads opponents by what they wear. He says if they're clean-shaven and dress well, they lean towards tight. If they've got a stained shirt and uncombed hair, they tend to be more loose and unpredictable. In the small blind, Daniel looks down at King Jack offsuit. Daniel dresses well, hair is combed. By his standards, he's tight. Maybe the goatee makes him a bit loose. For 950, he makes the call to the big blind. Rasmus Edenfall, 22 years old from Sweden with ace queen off, and he calls as well. How does Daniel read guys who don't even shave yet? <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go to the flop. Three players. It is queen, 10-5, two spades. Edenfall has top pair. Negranu with an up and down straight draw. Utnich, pair of tens. Negranu checks. They all check. Well, I'm surprised they all checked, and Edenfall slow playing his top pair top kicker. It's an eight of hearts. Negrano gets no help. Eden Falls, pair of queens still lead. Daniel now bets 2,200. Daniel didn't bet his draw on the flop and now decides to bet? Eden Fall now with the best hand. 6, and a raise 6, to 6,000. Mutnich says no thanks. Well, as it turns out, Edenfall was trapping. See, Daniel doesn't have a good read on him, hair-wise, clothes-wise, and otherwise. <laughs> Daniel thinking heavily about this. He oh. makes the call for 3,800. Daniel needs help unless he's going to try to buy it on the river. And so let's see the river. Daniel pairs his king and gets the check mark. And he's going to bet it. 3,600. That, that confounds me. Now, I've got a stain on my shirt, so I don't think real good. I think it confounds Edenfall, too. Edenfall makes the call. King. Kings are good. And Edenfall thinks, how does he do that? 
Daniel now over 73,000 and cruising. And he has tripled his chip stack from the start of today. Good news for Daniel on day two. Out in the field is Daniel Alai, who won his third bracelet this year. He's at the same table as the last woman standing from 09, Leo Margetz. Oh, yeah. Alai had raised with King Queen. Margetz moves all in with pocket sevens for almost 12,000. The button and blinds fold. Alai calls to put Margetz at risk. Here's the flop. It is Trey seven. Ted Margetz flops a set of sevens. Barg some miracle. Leo Margetz is going to double up. There's her double up. I think she said bring Patrick Antonius over here. Leo Margetz over 25,000 chips now as she stays alive in the main event. Daniel Alai takes a hit in his quest for another deep run here. Daniel finished 25th in the 07 main event. Leo Margetz finished 27th here last year. To Billy Cobb last year. 12th place finisher in a hand with David Backstrom after the turn. Cop just raised to 24,500. Backstrom owns a bowling center. I'm with you for life, buddy. A re raise to 34,000. Bowling. Oh. Cop put Backstrom all in. The amateur calls. Backstrom shows a 10 high flush and a nut flush for Cop. Backstrom's got to make the 7-10 split here to stay alive. Only the five of diamonds keeps him around. It's a queen of clubs and Cop will win the hand and knock out Backstrom. That was nearly an identical situation in reverse for Cop. That's how he got knocked out of last year's main event. Nice pot, Billy, over 131,000. It's nice when someone with a lower diamond flush based on with a lower diamond flush, isn't it? Lucky, that time the flop was lucky for Billy, but last year when he and Darvin Moon both flopped diamond flushes, luck was not on Billy's side. Last year I did get 12th place in the main event. I was cruising along as chip leader for a good majority of the time. Billy Cop with almost 20 million chips. Darvin Moon got sent to my table. I uh, just basically knew that he was more of an amateur type player. Two of the biggest stacks in the room on a collision course here. We both flopped the flush. When he checked the flop, I went ahead and bet, which I do with sets. You flop a flush six-handed, you've got to believe your best. When he just calls here, I'm feeling pretty certain that I have the best hand. To the turn we go. It is another deuce. A full house possibility now on the board. And Dorman Moon elected to check the turn again, and I bet. He bets a little more than two million. And at this point, Dorman Moon raises to six million. And come on. Billy Cobb shoves. Wow. I was pretty certain that if he had a better flush, he'd have to fold because of the paired board. I call it's over! It's That'll probably be one of the most controversial hands talked about for a long time. Billy Cobb may have given away a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. People always ask me if I have nightmares or anything like that. It's heartbreaking, I guess, when you get that close, but that's kind of how poker goes sometimes. So far this year, I'm just playing my game. I'd like to do well, but I'm not here for redemption at all. No, I'm playing to win the tournament, and I definitely think I'll be back there. Heartbreak for the 24-year-old. A moment in time he undoubtedly wants back, but as it turns out, Billy Cop's misery propelled Darvin Moon's magic carpet ride. <laughs> and there is Darvin talking with Dennis Phillips' road crew. Darvin doesn't talk to a whole lot of people in the woods, so he makes up for it at the main event. Dennis Phillips right now. No time for small talk and a hand with New York novelist and playwright Rachel Kranz. Kranz flopped a full house. Dennis just pocket jacks. He checked the turn. Kranz bet, and Dennis makes the 8,000 chip call. The river card is another for Kranz with the check mark. Dennis checks. To me, Dennis Phillips is frozen in time. He always looks the same. He always will look the same to me. Kranz will bet 15,000 into Phillips. All right. He makes the call, and his bad day just got worse. All right. Well, it's not all right. The truck horn's not blowing much for Dennis Phillips right now. Not been my day on this. I've just been incredibly, unbelievably lucky. I... I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say either. That's the appropriate response. A third deep run in jeopardy. To another man who knows about deep main event runs on a board of Ace Five Ace, Scotty Wynn moved all in for his last 19,000. Action on 27-year-old grad student Nick Gunn. Gunn calls to put Scotty at risk. Scotty shows a flop, full boat. Gunn with trip aces. Well, this hand far from over. Scotty still in danger. The 98 champ at risk. Turn card is a king. Scotty's still good. Gun needs an ace, king, or four to knock out Scotty Wynn. The river card is a queen, and Scotty Wynn will double up. Gun misses his target. Scotty with almost 63,000. It's nothing coming e easy, baby. Gotta sweat every, every single one of them. That looks Scotty good. sweats but doubles up. The <laughs> prince of poker is still a factor.
Rocket to Rio in the first of two day two sessions of the main event. In the field, Antonio Esfandiari, who finished 24th last year. He's in a hand with Gary Heyman, the Flyers fan, living in Hollywood, Florida. He bet 4,000 after the flop. Esfandiari lays it down. Can I see? Yeah. Heyman shows top two pair. See, if you ask nicely, they'll show you. It pays to be polite. <laughs> nice hand, sir. <laughs> Antonio got out of that hand just in time. He has doubled his stack so far today and looking for a little more magic in the main event this year. And Joe Cata looks like he's got a couple of aces up his sleeve. And the best starting hand of the game picks up another pot. Oh, my God. My ace. That's like all sweet. The youngest ever champ trying to do what Raymer, Hashem, and Eastgate have done recently. Make a deep main event run the year after winning it. Over to a world champion at eight years old. Former chess player Jeff Sarer just called the all-in of Shane Martinick post-flop. Sarer's set of sevens leads the flush draw of Martinick. <laughs> Large crowds would gather to watch Jeff play 40 people in chess at the same time. Here he's just looking to knock out one guy. Martinick gets a king, but he's still looking for a club. Martinick just got married between day one and day two of the main event. That's the worst beat he'll take here. Sar still leads with his set. River card is another king, and that gives Sar a full house. Checkmate sending Martinick to the exits. Told you not to get married. I guess day three for him will be honeymoon. Sarer over 63,000 chips. Two decades after quitting chess, Jeff re-emerged looking for a new game to challenge himself with, and he found it in poker. I love games. Like, some people love music and some people love art. As a kid, I think the only reason why I had any chess success was because of my unorthodox training. My dad always taught me, learn theory so that you can throw it out at the first available opportunity. That's a hell of a dangerous flop. I saw things quite fast and I had a very quick uh, speed of calculation. But most importantly, I, I was able to think outside the box. Well, that's what I think. Chess and poker are a combination of uh, science and art. Well, these are welcome cards. Psychology is math for me. I'm very aware of uh, human beings and our tendencies and patterns, because that's math as well. People hide their intentions and fears in life, but when you play poker, you get to see sort of a glimpse into their soul a little bit. It's like you had a long conversation just by playing cards. In chess, you can choose a route which is uncomfortable for your opponent. And in poker, you can do the same thing. The top players are always thinking of ways of creating different strategies and poker theory. I want to break those rules and just have fun. And hopefully the fun ends with me winning, but if not, at least I learned something. Jeff was taught the rules of chess at the age of four by his six-year-old sister, Julia, then began playing at the famed Manhattan Chess Club when he was six. At the feature table, they're still swapping stories and now talking about their ages. How old do I look to you? I didn't look at your age. That's irrelevant. Well, actually, in poker today, it's not irrelevant. How old you are is directly related, likely, to how good you are at poker. It's true. Between 21 to 25 playing in this event, dangerous. Usually... 50 to 55, less dangerous. There's like whole scientific proof to prove true. it. It's true. How old are you? 23? 22. I'm sorry. Big boy, please. So you're good then, because you're young, Swedish. And yeah, I'm very good. <laughs> you no, know, even if I were young and Swedish, I wouldn't be good at poker. <laughs> uh, Daniel Negreanu in early position, 7-6 of diamonds. Daniel likes to raise from early position with suited connectors. It's another way to confuse your opponents. Raise. He does just that, 1175 to James Carroll. I've read my scouting report on Daniel. <laughs> Carroll folds again over to Tony Utnich, King Jack of Clubs. Utnich. Makes the call. Utnich likes to call from the cutoff with high suited connectors. Actually, I'm just making that up. <laughs> it is folded over to Tristan McDonald in the big blind with pocket tens. As Daniel mentioned earlier, McDonald with two main event caches, 44th in 2002, 212th in 07. 38 year old investment banker raises to 4,600, and Daniel will make the call. Well, that was a serious re raise. Daniel going to come along with the connectors. Utnich call? calls as well. So McDonald built a nice pot with two others, and they will see a flop. Ace, deuce, queen, two clubs. McDonald's pocket tens are best. Utnich with straight and flush draws. Negreanu whiffed. McDonald checked. Daniel bet 6,500 with his 1% hand. Daniel definitely in a mixing it up mode. Utnich with the nut flush draw and Broadway draw makes the call. To McDonald now. And he'll lay down the tens. That's the best hand, but I would have laid it down, too. Negrano and Utnich heads up. Daniel has a better chance now with McDonald out. Eight of spades on the turn. Utnich has a better no pair than Daniel. Daniel, though, reaching again. 
This time, 13,500. Huge bluff from Daniel. He's now in knee deep, and he's not that tall. <laughs> Remember, we heard Daniel talk earlier about trying to do the opposite of your image. I don't think Utenich can lay down this draw. In fact, if he had a great read on Daniel, he'd raise right now with his huge draw. But Utenich makes the call with those draws. Daniel doesn't like to see that. And the River Card tray of clubs. Utenich hits his flush. Daniel now checks. Well, if the river was a blank, we'll never know if Daniel could have won the pot by firing again. Probably. It ended up being costly. Come on. He tries oh. to put Daniel okay, all in. Okay, I'll make one of my fancy guesses and say that you have the ten of clubs in your hand, as well as the jack of clubs in your hand. Not a bad guess. Which I can't beat. So, on that note, I have to fold. And Tony Utnich will take that nice pot. Can't wait to see if you had ten jack of clubs. I didn't have 10 jack clubs. Oh, he didn't have 10 jack clubs? Despite the excellent read, Daniel gave up a third of his stack. He is leaking chips and dangerously close to going down a slippery slope. World Series of Poker, presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Main event. Back at the feature table here at the Rio. We just saw Daniel Negreanu lose a good portion of his stack, and he may find trouble again. He raised pre-flop with pocket tens and was called by Rasmus Edenfall's aces, Pierre Bunara with deuces in the small blind, and Tristan McDonald with Jack Trey. What's he doing in the hand? Here's the flop. 10-4-6, a thing of beauty for Daniel. He hits his set, and that sound you heard was the aces of Edenfall cracking. Yeah, Edenfall slow played those aces, and he will now pay the price. Bunara and McDonald check. Daniel does as well. Daniel slow plays his set against an unthreatening board. Edenfall will bet his aces 3,500. Uh, Edenfall now makes his move, and it is too late. Bunara lays down, as does McDonald. The shoe clerks and crumb bums get out of the way. Daniel now just calls. Negrano <coughs> sitting pretty. Edenfall sitting precariously. Turn card now. Eight of clubs, leaving Eden Fall with minimal outs. Negreanu checks again. Daniel still sits on it. Eden Fall only has 10,000 left, and it's all in the middle now. Mission accomplished for Daniel Negreanu. Daniel played it perfectly to this point. He calls to put Eden Fall at risk. And Daniel in good shape to take all of Eden Falls' chips. Indeed, an ace and an ace only, or the 22-year-old Swede is eliminated. River card is a jack, and that will do it. Negrano wins. Rasmus Eden Fall knocked out, holding pocket aces. Well, that goes against Daniel's age theory as we lose the youngster. A shot in the arm just in time for Daniel Negrano as he hopes for another deep run here as he had at the World Series of Poker Europe main event, finishing second to that man, Barry Shulman. Shulman in a hand with Nate Lindsay. Lindsay bet, Barry raised, Lindsay cool. folded. I thought you meant he had 10 jacks. Barry having a good day here, trying to hold both World Series main event titles at the same time. And it is a Shulman family affair here. All in, no call. <laughs> That's Barry's wife, Alan Shulman. The year of the Shulman sequel still could be a hit. Everywhere you look, there's a Shulman or a Mizraki. Or an Esfan Diari. He gives the best massages here for sure. Pasha Esfan Diari, brother of Antonio, getting a massage from their dad, Bijan. The massage industry really could use some fresh blood. To brother Antonio, who spells his last name with an I because he says it looks better. You want me to call? Ricardo Tombini just shoved on Antonio. I'll do whatever you want me to do. Tombini doesn't speak yes. much English. You want me to call? Tombini thinks Antonio is asking him if his headband looks crooked. <laughs> Antonio folds. I believe you, so if you really want to call, I can't call, right? Game theory would dictate. Tombini should call his embassy to see if they can get Antonio to stop talking. <laughs> Antonio folds that hand, but still up for the day. The Estandiaris are not the only brothers out there, of course. The Mizraki brothers are hanging in there. Robert doing well, up to 245000 While Brother Michael is in a hand right now with retired fire captain Steve Genovese, who moved all in on the River for his last 5,500. The grinder's thinking about it. I know he's got quads. And makes the call. Genovese shows ace high. The grinder has a flush. And Genovese is gone. Report to the rail. <laughs> Michael had one of the bigger stacks in the room, but he has been in a free fall. He's hoping that will get him back on track. One player who has been trending in the right direction all day is Patrick Antonius. The more pots he wins, the more ladies are there to admire the former model.
They're not here for his chips, Lon. But he has doubled those chips, and that's putting Patrick on everyone's mind. Unbelievable. Now he has the multicolored portraits. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Even more intimidating, like we're not already intimidated. <laughs> <laughs> it's time for the Jack Links Beef Jerky Wild Card Hand, and nobody at this table can seem to figure out Patrick. And Norman, it's your chance now to see if you can get into Antonius's head. Watch and learn, Lon. <laughs> Patrick has a wild card hand. He raises the 2,000. He's like Daniel. He's going to play suited connectors here, 7-6. Denny Walters on the button, a high school wrestling coach from Oregon with pocket jacks. Raise them. Nope, just a call. I know you hate that call, Lon. Who can win with jacks? The flop, 10 King Trey. Walters sees one over card. Ah, uh, jack schmacks. Antonio's first to act goes with 4,000. Uh, it's not 7-6 then. I think it's Ace King. Walters won't be bullied. He makes the call. I don't like calling with jacks. It's a recipe to a bad meal. A queen on the turn. Walters with an up and down straight draw. Patrick has chips, 9,000. Ace King. I don't think he's bluffing here. <laughs> I can't figure out women, but Patrick Antonius, I know the man. Don't call. Don't call. He does call. He called again. Sheesh. All right, so here we go to the river. It's another king. Yeah, what are you going to do with your jacks now? Exactly. Patrick, first to act. He's bet every street. And this time, he makes it 26,000. Almost the size of the pot. He's making it look like a bluff. Okay, if this guy put his pocket jacks on eBay right now, there would not be a single bid for them. Don't call. Don't call! He pays the price. Patrick, show us your cards. Pocket trays for a winning full house. Now, I didn't have the right cards, but I had the right idea. Patrick and I are simpatico. He wins big on the Jack Link's Beef Jerky Wild Card Hand. You're running, you're running. Yeah, hitting. Hitting, a little hitting on all cylinders. Don't call! Antonius up to over 180,000 now. <laughs> Just like a few for him. Just a few. Patrick Antonius has finally become a force at the main event here on day two. The 2010 World Series of Poker is presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Feed your wild side. And in part by the official WSOP game on Facebook. Play online now. For details, go to WSOP.com slash Facebook. And FullTiltPoker.net. Learn chat and play with the pros. The first of two day two sessions well underway here at the Rio. At the end of the journey, one person will add their picture to that wall of bracelet winners here in 2010. In the pavilion room, Ted Force hopes of being that person is at risk. He's at a coin flip against Ramin Henka from Germany. Force fives ahead of Henka's ace king. The flop is Queen Ten Deuce all hearts. Wow. Henka with straight and flush draws. Force now a three to two dog. Turn card at king. Henka pairs up. Ted just about done. Ted needs the five of spades to stick around in the main event. It's an ace, and that's it. Henka knocks out Ted Forrest. Boy, he's lost some weight. Ramin Henka takes the last of Ted Forrest's chips in this 2010 main event. Yes, I just have to win this bet. Time to go run the desert. Well, at least he's a little lighter in the wallet. To another player who had every excuse last year to go run in the desert, Billy Kopp in a hand against Canadian Armando Paglieri. After the river, Paglieri bet 6,100. Kopp just raised a 24,002. Paglieri folds. Cop takes the chips. Cop accumulating a lot of chips again. Over now to Dennis Phillips at a new table with a shorter stack. Oh, is this the hand? Phillips running uphill all day. I'm all in. Dennis shoves from the button. He's got ace jack. Folded over to the big blind, Carmelo Puglisi. Call. He calls with pocket sevens. Phillips at risk. This is Phillips' third main event, and he's gone deep in the other two. Right now, he's in danger of going out on day two. All right, here's the flop, and there's a seven. Puglisi flops a set. Phillips all but gone now. He'll need runner, runner, something to stay alive. Third card is a king. He is, and Dennis Phillips is knocked out of this main event. Back to our featured table. Let's take a look at the tail of the tape brought to you by the official WSOP game. Play now on Facebook. Daniel's voluntary hands are 32% compared to the 23% table average. So he's been active today, and he's been a little more aggressive than the rest of the table. It adds up to a win percentage of 18, which is pretty good. And that's why Daniel has 56,000 chips after starting the day with 24,000. Under the gun on the Jack Link Speed Jerky Pocket Cam, James Carroll with 10-7. And he folds again. 
to Marvin Glusak. And I'm sorry, Marvin, you have pocket jacks. Well, you either raise with pocket jacks or you use them as coasters at your next Tupperware party. <laughs> Glusak raised to 1,500. He's very short stacked. Boy, there are so many hands I hate, Lon. Oh, by the way, speaking of weight bets, a few years back, Daniel laid Ted Forrest 20 to 1 that he, Daniel, would never weigh as much as 170 pounds. When could Daniel collect on that? Exactly. King nine of hearts for Daniel in the big blind. No tricks this time. No, oh, yeah, you know how much you make tricks to do tricks with? <laughs> I'm just going to call and see what happens. All right, Daniel will see the flop with Marvin, who has only about 3,000 behind. All right, the flop. 9-8, King. Daniel, a top two. Check. And he checks. Marvin moves all in. Daniel calls. Marvin Glusak at risk. Negrano trying to continue a very good day, too, here by punching out the man who grows palm trees. Turn guard now. Deuce of clubs, no help to Marvin. Blue sack has to have a jack. The river card is a seven, and Daniel Negreanu knocks off Marvin Glusak. Pocket jacks, the last hand he sees at the main event this year. Well, this is fun. Day two. So far, day two has been good to Daniel. He has chipped up and hopes to finally make that deep run. But for some, day two was the end of the road as their dreams were dashed with an early exit. Next year, bye-bye. Including some former champions who failed to conjure up past magic. But Johnny Chan, Scotty Wynn, Joe Cata, and Chris Moneymaker still loom large. Good-looking guy up there, isn't he? As do a bevy of top pros, some of whom are thriving while others are just surviving. You beat me up. They and the rest will march on in hopes of keeping their main event and dreams alive. Back to business. For Norman Chad, I'm Lon McCarran. We'll see you next time as day two of the main event continues.